Welcome to a very special episode of the Hot Seat with Holly Heat. I am your host, Holly Heat, and it's a very special episode because it's just yours truly. That's right, I'm gonna talk about a couple of major sports topics. Um, then we'll play a little game and then we're gonna t I'm gonna take a few questions uh, for my social media, which I'm sure is gonna work out fabulously for me. Um, so first and foremost, a, a big headline, it's been kind of um, a meme topic, like most things end up being. It was the lightweight uh, fight between Tank Davis and Raleigh Ramiro. And so I'm sure most of you have been following it. Um, and I am not your boxing expert or anything even remotely close to that. However, it was hard not to notice the knockout in the sixth round, uh, courtesy of Tank Davis. And I think for a lot of people, it was super satisfying because Raleigh Romero really like went full fledged and completely ended up putting his foot in his mouth, <laughs> essentially. Um, he talked like the most shit of, of almost anybody I could think of uh, as of recent and he did not back it up. So I think it was satisfying for a lot of people to, to see him get knocked out in the, in the way that he did and that there were so many wonderful memes about it. So, and coming out of that fight, the post game was especially interesting where uh, Romero goes on to say that he wants a rematch, which, you know, it, for most people, I think they would agree this doesn't really warrant a rematch. Um, it wasn't really just a close fight like that. I mean, I guess he did win about four of the rounds prior to that, but doesn't really warrant a rematch. So it was a little off the wall that he said it and he felt like he won all six rounds. This is what he said in, in the post um, fight conference. Um, it, it was kind of baffling to be honest with you, but, but moving forward, this was, um, Tank Davis's last fight under Mayweather Promotions, which, you know, kind of leaves things up in the air. Where, where is he going from here? You know, obviously he wants to work on getting more belts, work towards that being an undisputed champion. And we know that those come few and far between. So what is next for Tank Davis? So that's something we're going to be on the lookout for. Um, obviously you guys know, I am a huge NBA fan. The Biggest story, of course, um, is the NBA Finals. And we are looking at a Celtics-Golden State Warriors matchup. So I just wanna talk about a few, you know, takeaways from, from the playoffs, which I think are um, pretty important. Um, there's kind of that old adage or kind of like that, that coach's wisdom that always tells you that defense is what wins. And, you know, every year we kind of go in this and we're always looking at the, you know, who, who's going to put up the most points, who's going to make these flashy plays. What, what do the, you know, fans go in to see? We, that's what we want to see. We want to see the scoring. We want to see the three pointers. We want to see the dunks, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, like any awesome coach will tell you defense is what wins that wins championships. And, in this case, we have um, a couple of teams who play really hard on defense. Boston in particular, you have the D Defensive Player of the Year and Marcus Smart. So I think that the biggest takeaway is this idea that defense, it's not flashy, but it's relevant. Um, and also the ball movement Golden State has and uh, the Celtics, Golden State is pretty much un unmatched in, in this respect. But if you go back and you look at the stats and you look at the ball sharing, you, you kind of see several players on each team uh, in double digits. And I think this sp speaks volume of the idea of team. There's not, not so much the superstar. So we're kind of going into this uh, finals without these sort of super teams that we've seen in the past. And you know, at one time, Golden State, you could label them a super team, but they were built organically. So I think those are two really big things that we haven't necessarily seen in a while. And 
to be honest with you, this is kind of the best of basketball. This is, is I would say this year's playoffs have been some of the best that we've seen in years. And I, I, you know, I thought that the NFL playoffs this past year were some of the best that we've had in years. So I am super excited at the direction that the NBA is taking, you know, and not to say that it's a forced direction, but I think that it's exciting that we are kind of going back to this sort of, and and I could be wrong, you know, we could have a, a super team there next year, but to see it go to this sort of team aspect and then have that defensive piece, the sharing the ball, the ball, like all of that is just, I think it's great for the NBA. Hopefully it, you know, might, shut a few of the uh, NBA naysayers down. Those people, oh, this isn't the same NBA from from back in my day and so to, you know, and so forth. But of course we still have all the refereeing issues and <laughs> the, the rule changes and so forth, which people will continue to criticize. Speaking of referees, I thought an, an interesting topic that came up and um, I believe it was in that game six, there was a call that came sort of, I think they wanted to say, it might've been three minutes and I'm not sure, it was about three minutes after the uh, points had been uh, put on the scoreboard. And it was Max Struess for Miami, shot a three pointer. I believe they awarded him the points and then they came back later and, and took them away and they said his foot was on the line. It's still kind of like a controversial call in my opinion. I don't believe it, it should have counted. There's probably some people here that would disagree with me. Anyhow, it kind of brings up this really um, important topic going forward. At, should there be sort of a time limit in place for the review of plays, for the ref, referee's review of plays? Of course we have, you know, opportunities for coaches, which I think they have, you know, they pretty much have to call it right away, the coaches challenge. Um, but should there be a time limit in place? I think that that's something that, you know, uh, should be a topic in the off season to kind of uh, address that. While I think it's never too late to get the call right, I do feel like there are some improvements that should be made. So there's not even a controversy around it. So there's been a couple of new additions to, um, I guess you could say the NBA uh, collection of awards, right? So now they've started giving out the conference MVPs, which, you know, to me kind of feels like participa participation awards. Um, not super thrilled about that. You know, it's just, you know, just just minimize the, the amount of awards. But some I thought were kind of interesting are these fan favorites that NBA came out and they de debuted them today. So as far as those go, they had a fan favorite dunk. And the dunk was none other than Ja Morant. And I mean, which is totally appropriate since he pretty much dominated highlights th this year. Um, if this, this'll work. Uh, let's take a look here. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's pretty. <sighs> I mean, it, it's hard to, to find a dunk with him that isn't amazing. But uh, the next one was Steven Adams assist of the year. And this was again to uh, John ja Morant. So uh, there's an ad on it. It's a little awkward. Okay, so assist of the year, full court pass oh and the buzzer beater right that was amazing i do remember that i'm almost positive that i posted that um it was an amazing pass by stephen adams but i thought the shot was even more amazing so kind of kind of like another morant sort of like award um handle of the year was given to jordan pool um it was real smooth, you know, that that was pretty smooth. Like it didn't even look like it took a whole lot of effort on Poole's part. Good job, I, I like that one. Uh, let's see, buzzer beater of the year. Like you could technically have given that to John Morant as well. 
buzzer beater of the year, Devontae Graham. Hmm. Versus Oklahoma City. It was nice, but um, I don't think it's better than the John Morant, but how many awards can you really give John Morant? Uh, best dressed. So best dressed, Devin Booker, which, I mean, I haven't been like a super fan of his, his outfits. Maybe he's gotten some dressing advice from his girlfriend. Is he still with? Is he still with? No, you don't know? Okay. Well, thought he was with one of the uh, Jenner Kardashian girls. Uh, best photo. So I actually kind of like this award because I, I like the idea of iconic photos in sports and my all time all iconic photo would be of course the, the, um, Dwayne Wade, LeBron James, Ali Dunk, you know, like great. Like that's my favorite, right? Um, and this year it went to Gary Payton, uh, the second. And I will say from that perspective, I do like it because everybody's kind of looking in awe and then it's like, you know, it, it's pretty, that's a pretty great, just because you have all of the, the players like looking in awe. Still doesn't beat my favorite of all time, but. So I've read your comments. I've heard what you've said. How can a woman possibly know anything about sports? My show, The Hot Seat with Holly Heat, is an experience for sports fans to get to know athletes, fans, and myself through an outside-the-box perspective. This fall, you'll see who sits in my hot seat. So now we're going to play a game that I've played with one of my guests before, Holly Heat's Punch-Out, and this is in, in reference to basically the Tank Davis, Raleigh Romero fight. And this is where I'm going to pick two celebrities. Well, I don't pick them. I had someone pick them for me. And I'm going to pick who I think would win the fight between them. And they're completely random because the person that gave them to me is completely random. I love him to death though. Okay. All right, I'm ready. My off camera production assistant is going to read me these matchups. Hmm. I mean, Snoop. So Snoop's, you know, he's a little older. Um, you know, he's he he does look a little frail these days. Now, Wiz has been like working out. So I'm definitely going Wiz on that one. Like he's been putting in time in the gym. Even though he seems like a really happy guy. He seems like he really wouldn't want to beat anybody up. I mean, no, not just because the, you know. But I, I'm gonna say Wiz if it came down to it. Oh man, they're both like super strong. Um, hmm. I think Giannis, no, you know what? I was gonna say Giannis seems a little bit too nice. Although they would criticize Dwight Howard for not being more aggressive. Like Giannis is like accidentally aggressive. Like he's kind of like a loose cannon, but like accidentally. Um, I'm gonna say Giannis. He has youth on his side as well. And Dwight's had a lot of injuries. All right. Sharon Stone versus Michelle Pfeiffer. Uh, let's see. This is like throwback. Um, hmm. I don't know. It's like Catwoman versus like what was her name in um, Basic Instinct? I don't know what her character's name was. She was like a really. I don't know. I think I think Michelle Pfeiffer seems like a nicer person. So I'm gonna go Sharon Stone. I think Sharon Stone has a little mean streak in her. Ooh, you know what? I just got finished watching season one of Winning Time. Um, and as some of you might know, I'm not well versed in um, like old school basketball and so forth. But, and he, you know, hmm, I mean, he's a, they're both pretty tough characters. Dang. No, I'm gonna say Bill Russell. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna go with Bill Russell. <laughs> John Riley Will Speaking of winning time, John C. Riley, absolutely great in the show. Um, he makes me laugh no matter what. Uh, Will Ferrell too though. Dang, dang, if I had to think, and it's like the whole end of Step Brothers, right? That's one of my favorite movies. 
Step Brothers. The slow punch at the end is classic. Um, geez. I don't know. I think John C. Riley probably has a little, maybe, yeah, he's got a little extra something to him. A little extra um. Barney's a dinosaur, like, like dinosaurs are pretty ferocious. <laughs> um, Big Bird, but Big Bird is big. Like Barney looks like that. Hmm. Oh, and he has short arms. What am I saying? That's insane. No, Big Bird, but Big Bird has wings. But I think Big Bird has some arms too. I'm going Big Bird. Wow, Battle of the um, Tell-Alls. The uh, Battle of the Tell-All Women. So we have the old school Tell-All Woman and then it's like the new school with Brittany Renner. Um, I don't know, Brit Brittany's been looking a little thin lately. And I think Corinne, she kind of has like, you know, probably yeah, she's probably been in a few fights. I don't, I don't know if if uh, bundles of Britney has been in that that many fights. I I could see Corinne being in some fights. So I'm going Corinne step in super head on that one. All right, and now we're gonna do a little mailbag, so to speak. Against my better judgment, I posted a question on my Instagram, the Holly Heat. Um, what is something that you would like to ask me? And uh, I think. I'm pretty much gonna gonna get what I think I'm gonna get in this, <laughs> but let's let's see what the questions are. Let's production assistant let let, let me have it. So my heart is with um, Jason Tatum, or as I like to call him, Ty Ty. If you have not seen that on YouTube, please go watch the Ty Ty video on Jason Tatum's YouTube page. You will not regret it super funny um but i would like boston to win are they going to win no so i'm going to say the golden state warriors will win most likely in six games give them six games i'd love to get a game seven out of it though do i have trust issues don't we all have trust issues I mean, yeah, I, I probably do have trust issues. <laughs> okay. What do you like in a man? Um, do I like in a man? It's probably been so long since I've actually really dated somebody. Um, what do I like in a man? I like a manly man. Like, I like a sports fan, a guy that will like, you know, if he sees a snake, he'll like get it for me. Um, <laughs> it has to have a sense of humor. And yeah, athletic probably to a certain extent. Um, yeah, I, those are those are things that I like in a man. But 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 most importantly, it's about your heart. It's about your heart. I have been, it's, I've been taking a, a long hiatus from posting any um, swimsuit photos, but it, but it is that time of year, folks. It is swimsuit season. It's sundress season and it's swimsuit season twofold. Um, I don't know, guys, honestly. <laughs> is swimsuit Holly over? I mean, that, that's the, that's the big question. Um, but I'm going to say wait and see. Wait and see. That's such a random question. Um, what would I have done differently? I'm not sure what this is in regard to, but I think, hmm. What would I have done differently? That's a hard one. Really? <laughs> no. Um, I don't know. I. I don't think I would do anything differently. Why are you so ugly? 
Wow. I wonder who submitted that question. Do you know? You don't know. You don't don't know. Because I have a feeling I know who submitted that question. And they're gonna be grounded tonight. Maybe the whole weekend. <laughs> yeah. Am I single? Hmm. Well, this has been a great episode of The Hot Seat with Holly Heat. Thank you for joining me by myself. We'll be back with more episodes of The Hot Seat with Holly Heat and more compelling guests. Um, see you next time. Average the most or who's gonna score? I mean, won't we kind of even out? <laughs> no, because if you still divide it, like if you have forty points. Right. Yeah, I was gonna say Jason Tatum. Yeah. No, that was literally my <laughs> thanks to ruining it. As usual. I pick Golden State, but I I still think. But see, Golden State shares the ball more. Like, well, Boston shares the ball a lot too. But Golden State, like, really shares the ball.